Mousehold is one of the funniest and low-key dangerous Pokemon given to us in Gen 9. Its signature move, Population Bomb, is a 20 base power normal move that hits 10 times. Paired with its ability, Technician, which gives it a 1.5 times boost to moves that have 60 base power or less, this little mouse family can be an absolute beast. You can boost this thing even further with the move Tidy Up. This gives you a plus one boost in both attack and speed, while also removing entry hazards. And you can call them the Janitor family because they are ready to sweep. So I like to look at Mousehold as a little, a little family of Mafia mice. These are not the mice you want to owe money to, I can assure you that. What is happening guys, welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button, it'll only take you a second and I promise you will not regret it. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent is going to lead off with the Lycanroc as I decide to toss out the Cleaver. So of course Cleaver is here to essentially get up some Stone Axe, be able to set up some Stealth Rock. On top of a little bit of damage, be able to break a Focus Sash, and overall have a good time. I imagine they're probably just going to go for a Stealth Rock of their own. I go for that Stone Axe, and it actually ends up missing. So you gotta love the 10% chance to miss. It seems like Stone Axe is some bullet... Game Freak is lying. There's no way that's a 10% chance. This thing misses all the damn time. However, I decide I'm in too deep. I might as well just go for it again here. I am Choice Scarf, so I'm able to outspeed. And I nearly am able to knock this thing down to its probable Focus Sash. So... This now allows them to unfortunately go for a rock slide, which I know it can take at least one of. However, now I'm in a bad spot because an Accelerock does end up knocking me out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to conserve the Cleaver, this thing with the Choice Scarf. Super nice to be speedy and honestly hits extremely hard. So I'm going to tuck that bad boy in the back pocket and we bring out Poison Slowbro with a gun. The most menacing Slowbro there is. I imagine they go for the Accelerock here. Instead, they actually just go for that rock slide once more where I'm relatively bulky, so I'm able to take it nicely. And at this point, I can get a nice little roll for a potential quick draw. However, it doesn't actually happen. They almost knocked me out with a crunch. Uh, but luckily, I'm able to fire off a nice little sludge bomb here. So the good news about any time you have Galarian Slowbro out is it does not, speed stat does not mean anything. You can always have the chance to go first. So I'm just gonna sleep, keep the Slowbro in here and see you know, what we can make happen as they decide to go into Cyclozar. So I stay in. I go for that Sludge Bomb, and it actually does not end up triggering the either the Quick Draw or the Quick Claw. So, unfortunately, they do get the Knockout. However, this is going to allow me a free switch. And it is time to bring out the most important thing, which is family. Shout out to Vin Diesel. We're going to go into the Mouse Hold here, and we've got ourselves some little mouse tricks up our sleeve. So, I know that I can guarantee take an attack from the Cyclozar. So, that's going to allow me to do what these mice do best, and that is clean this place up. I'm going to go for a Tidy Up. Now, what that's going to do is get rid of the Stealth Rock on my side of the field. And it's also going to give me a nice little plus one attack and speed. It's imagine if these mice were dragons, were dragon dancing while also being productive and doing some chores. We take care of that stealth rock. And now we're actually in a really interesting spot because if this Cyclozar is a plus attack nature rather than speed, we are both actually at plus one. So I could potentially be faster and it's a gamble that I'm willing to risk. It turns out the risk pays off because we are in fact faster as a plus speed mice. And we're going to population bomb the shit. We just throw our children at this dude. Listen, I don't have my wide lens anymore because of the knockoff, but we don't need no lens. We're just throwing babies out here. Bomb the shit out of them. Down goes the Cyclozar. So the reason why the gamble was something I was willing to go for on the speed there is because they pretty much do not have anything that can easily deal uh, with, the, with the mice. So they're going to go into the Monkey Dory. So here's a situation where... I should actually be running Bite on this thing over the, the beat up, but I think it's hilarious to have a little family of mice beat the shit out of you. But they go for it's a, the fake out here, which does activate the Toxic Chain, which is actually quite annoying. That is going to give me a Toxic Poison and going to put the mice on a timer, but not before we're able to show why you don't give a mouse a cookie, because we're going to beat the shit out of you. We go for that beat up here. It is going to hit five times. Luckily, it's going to be enough to knock out the Monkey Dory. Population Bomb also would have been in a situation to knock this out if I didn't miss. Uh, so the Monkey Dory is going to go down, luckily, and you just got beat up by a child mouse. We just throw the baby at him. That's just, this is this thing's whole deal. It's honestly pretty gangster if you really think about it. But down goes the Monkey Dory, and we are going to take some poison, which is going to stack up. So it's looking like we have a few turns left of some absolute destruction, and in comes the Toad Scroll. So, if we can land ourselves a population bomb here, we can easily hit enough times uh, to knock this thing out, pretty much even if it's like defensive. At plus one attack, Mousehold is an absolute monster that should not be played with. We go for that population bomb, and while we did just lose four children, that is the price of doing business, baby. It takes care of the Toad Scroll. That's an annoying Pokemon out of the way, don't have to worry about anything like a spore happening. And we had, we had six still tucked in the chamber. The, the babies were ready to 
ready to sacrifice themselves if need be, for real. So, they're down to two Pokemon at this point. It's going to be the Okie Doki and the Fezendipity. So, we got a couple new Legend Boys to take care of here, and in comes the Okie Doki, where I'm going to go for the Population Bomb. However, they actually decide to go into the Fezendipity instead, probably realizing that Okie Doki has their best matchup against the rest of my team. Uh, Fezendipity doesn't help them out a whole lot, so I go for that Population Bomb. This thing does not have the physical defense to hang out with the mice, and that is going to take care of it. So now, unfortunately, our reign is going to come to an end. That fake out with the Toxic Chain was honestly kind of crazy because now it's going to limit the, the entire sweep from the uh, from the mouse hold here. But we still have, you know, a full team in the back. And how, how bad could it be, right? All they have is this Okie Dogie, and I feel like I'm honestly ready. So listen, here's where things are going to get a little bit interesting. I quickly go into the Cleaver because I've been messing around with this dude's moveset, and... I've been moving her moves around a little bit. I, I swear I have dual wing beat on this thing. Unfortunately, as the Okie Dokie comes in, I quickly realize I do in fact not have the dual wing beat, and this puts me in a little bit of a weird spot. I don't have much to hit this thing with really at all. So I figure at this point, I basically just have to try to get some chip damage. Down goes Cleaver, and essentially then uh, I bring in an answer again. I go for the Stone Axe. It doesn't do you know, a whole lot of damage, and also we set up Stealth Rock for... Absolutely no reason, but he actually ends up going for the Substitute. So, the Substitute puts it in a spot where it probably means it's like a sub bulk up set and it's going to be physically defensive. All I really need to do is ensure that I can break the Substitute before the Cleaver goes down. So, I'm going to Stone Axe him one more time. Luckily, I am able to hit. Cleaver really figured his shit out, got his prescription filled, and uh, we're able to actually land these, fortunately. And it is enough to break the Substitute, but that is going to allow this thing to set up a bulk up. Now, I'm thinking... I've got this thing to, you know, around half health. It does get a plus one attack and defense here. So it's honestly actually a pretty scary dog at this point. It's It does also have the recovery with the leftovers. And I'm just really, <laughs> like, feel like I cannot drop this bag on losing this matchup. So the problem is the Pokemon I have in the back are not super great for this. I go for one more Stone Axe. It is going to get it to around half as they finish me off with the Drain Punch. Now, Drain Punch is not ideal to see because, of course... That just means pretty decently reliable recovery from this thing, plus the leftovers. And uh, I am honestly pretty afraid of this. Of this, I really fucked up by messing around with the moveset on this cleaver. I was sure that I had coverage. I've been changing it specifically for fighting types, but uh, it does not work out for me there. So here's the plan. I'm going to go into the absolute beast that is Rotom Heat. Now, I have a couple different options here. I figure... I know I can take an attack from this thing at plus one. Um, Overheat is going to be my best damage. However, my safest play is to go for a Will-O-Wisp. And that turns out to be a shitty idea because, of course, Will-O-Miss never hits and allows them to get up another Drain Punch. And at this point, I definitely should have clicked Overheat. And I may, in fact, be dropping the bag at this point. It also gets the Toxic Chain just to, to put some poison in the old wound. And I am definitely afraid of the Okie. I really, I figured if I could get the Will-O-Wisp, I can bring it to a point where it can't do enough damage to, uh, like, Empoleon in the back. But still, this thing's got pretty pretty decent bulk and offensive ability at this point. And now, my best special attacker, at least for this matchup, is not having the greatest time. So, what I decided to do is just go for the will o -Wisp again. Listen, I've, got my, I've dug myself into this, and we're going to dig ourselves out of here. will o -Miss does actually hit for us this time, and now it's going to go ahead and have this thing's attack. So, even a plus one, it's not going to be able to do a whole lot of damage, but... Uh, it does go for the substitute here, and at this point, I just need to break this substitute, and if I can get Rotom back in, uh, and Overheat should be decent enough damage to be able to knock this thing out. So, my kind of best answer to this thing is going to be Rotom, as long as they do not have this damn beanbag uh, in front of me. Honestly, playing the be beginning of this match, I had no idea how much of a problem this Okie Dogie was going to be. It would not be a problem at all if they didn't get the Toxic Chain on the damn mousehold, but... Uh, you know, these are the these are the consequences consequences of my action. So I go for the Volt Switch here. I do that because it's going to break the Substitute. And then essentially my plan is to go to Tropius. And Tropius can essentially just be sacked. I can bring back in Rotom and then hopefully, you know, make some easy bake bullshit happen. So uh, it does break the Substitute. And Bananasaur comes in. I figure they probably have some type of poison coverage. We've seen Substitute, Bulk Up, and Drain Punch at this point. And they're actually going to end up setting up another Bulk Up just to be even more scary. It is ordinarily wouldn't be that bad if Tropius had something like the Earthquake. However, this specific Tropius just has Leaf Blade and a Terra Blast. However, I don't know if going for the Terra Water is going to be a beneficial play for me, just essentially because I'm hitting this thing on the physical side. It's got the bulk ups 
and I'm just gonna end up going for a regular Terraplast. I figure I get a little bit of chip damage here, they knock me out with something like a Gunk Shot, uh, and then I bring in the Rotom. However, it actually turns out to be Crunch as their final slot for the coverage, and that is, honestly, it takes a bite out of my bananas, first of all. This is my fucking bananas, you could not have one of those, and... It kind of is unfortunate. I would prefer if they knocked me out just so that I can bring in the Rotom and then a, an Overheat should be able to do it. But at this point now, I find myself in a spot where, you know what, screw it. I'm going to go for the Terra Water <laughs> Terra Blast just because I can get a little bit more damage. However, in hindsight, it is actually going to put me in a spot where Drain Punch is then going to be neutral and they can get more health back. And overall, I'm just feeling like, how did I, how have, how have I got myself here? It's actually just kind of a funny and interesting spot to be in because it truly, really, like, the game is never over <laughs> until it's over. Especially when you got just weirdos like Tropius for horrible matchups here. But I go for that Terra Water Terra Blast and, you know, it doesn't do much as they go for another crunch. And they actually do get the defense drop. So they're going to be able to knock me out with another Drain Punch here. But like I said, I'm just kind of in a spot where I cannot hard switch into the Rotom. I, I need to wait until I can bring it in for free uh, to be able to have a chance and landing that overheat. So I decided to go for the substitute here is the reason is Essentially, I take some of my own HP basically so you can't have it. I say hey, I know you're trying to drain me pause But I'm just gonna basically allow you to not have as much health But then you actually you do get health from the the substitute regardless. So uh, now I'm just behind a substitute looking like a jackass and uh, <laughs> It is gonna fade here. I kind of forget about that interaction if I'm gonna be honest regardless Listen, here's what happens. The Okidogi is going to get some health back with the Drain Punch. I'm basically going to wait until he's able to knock out the Tropius. And then guess what? We travel forward in time. Rotom comes in and I can finish it off with an Overheat. That just saved us a, a, a bit of time. And you are welcome. So <laughs> that is going to be the end of the match. It was honestly a kind of hilarious one. I don't know. The, the end there, I really, I really got myself in a bad situation not having any coverage against Okie Dogi. You, you really, you hate to see it. But hey, listen, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like or else Mousehold will be dropping bombs on you. That's a guarantee.